Hey everyone, welcome back to one more episode here on the channel. I'm Lewis, and today we have a very special video. We were talking about retopology. Now, let me hide this block out here really quickly. Uh, select here, H, hide. And here, as you guys can see, I have uh, the iconic, I have modeled the iconic Eva, Eva helmet. Um, and we'll be using this base mesh to test different uh, uh, retopo automatic retopology algorithms, including QuadriMesh, really popular, same developer from, from ZRemesher, uh, DyneRemesh, which is uh, a add-on included uh, right now on the latest version of Blender 2.81, also for 2.82, uh, and also the new Polyretopo 2 that came out with Maya 2020 as well. So we'll be comparing these three different uh, automatic retopo algorithms. And for those of you that know QuadriMesher, um, fun fact, I bought ZBrush back in 2009 because I wanted to get my hands on that uh, ZRemesher algorithm. And now in 2019, we have the opportunity to have that same algorithm on your package of choice. So QuadriMesher is doing that. Uh, it's available for Blender, it's available for Cinema 4D, Houdini, Modo, 3ds Max, and Maya. And we'll be taking a look at that too then. So here I have subdivision modeling, you know, uh, with some uh, pieces detached. And from that, I bought to, I bring that mesh into ZBrush. And in ZBrush, I made just a little fun here, uh, really sketchy, really rough with the details that I wanted. And this is a very high resolution mesh. So we'll be testing. Let's duplicate this, this high resolution mesh and let's apply the new uh, Dynery mesh with basic um, settings, okay? Straight from factory settings. You can see we have weight factor, density, decimate, subdivisions, smoothness. Now, uh, Alberto FX, the developer from this tool, said to me that uh, this is not exactly optimized for hard surface models. He recommends this add on for quick people working on the ArchViz industry or um, people that have a really rough 3D scan and just want to retopologize it fast. So it's the, the results from this are really actually not optimized for that. And you see it here. So here's the final result, as you guys can see. Uh, very bad uh, topology for people on the game industry. This is very uh, crazy edge loops all around, you know, not symmetry at all. There's no... Uh, consistency between the two sides of the model. But again, uh, this is something that uh, Alberto stated to me. Uh, it's more recommended for Dyn Retopo sculpts, uh, people working inside of Blender with the paintbrush. So it's more focused for hobbyists and not professionals. Of course, this is, uh, it's good for people that want to melt down their models or have a artistic approach to their models, you know. Uh, then using the traditional uh, decimate or remesh modifier built in. Now, uh, I, I would say one of the, the, the good things I like the, the add-on is that they made the buttons really big, you know, so you can see the buttons, you can see what you are changing. And for people uh, with eye strain, this, this is really good ergonomically. But besides that, I think there's room for improvement in the algorithm. Uh, I would not recommend this for game people at all. And um, I'm eager to see what he can bring more uh, with this algorithm, you know. It's there, it's an option, and we need to consider it. Next, so let's jump into Maya. So here in Maya, we have a really different ball game. It's totally different. Um, I want to state that I will be looking at the Maya quad remastered version, uh, but it has the same features, the same uh, things on the UI, 
to Blender as well. So everything that I said here about QuadriMesher also applies to the same QuadriMesher version and license included in Blender. So uh, you can buy it for any package and it's a standalone plugin, okay? So with that stated, uh, when you install QuadriMesher in Maya, uh, it will set to you for to go on the users shared Autodesk folders on your uh, installation directory, uh, directory. And we have a application uh, plugins folder. If you don't find this folder on this location, uh, please click Ctrl N, create, create a new folder there and uh, name that new folder uh, application plugins and then sel select that as the installation process. When you open up Maya, you have uh, the new QuadriMesh uh, tab right here on this corner. And you see we have the QuadriMesh button right here. If you click there, it will open the QuadriMesh uh, user interface. And here we have our options, okay? Um, so here I have all the different topology tests I executed. Uh, on the Eva helmet, and let's open as well the Polyretopo data here. So here we can see we have a very similar UI, uh, but we have different parameters uh, that QuadriMesh offers us. Um, if you're new to Maya 2020, the way you can access the new feature of uh, automatic Retopo is coming. Selecting your mesh, go to mesh and going to retopologize. Now, this button here, you can see it's green. It's green because it's a new feature from this version of Maya. So everything that is new, it's highlighted with that. So don't worry about that. And if you retopologize your mesh, it will open up a console and it will state all the different stages of the process. So. Straight off, I want to say that Polaroid Topo in Maya is way slower than QuadriMesh, okay? Uh, the way it works is like Polaroid Topo actually go throughout your, your mesh and tries to evaluate your, the, the geometry from what it's whiffing already there. And QuadriMesh works differently. It tries to uh, understand your mesh regardless of the building topology and then reapply the topology up on that. So it's way faster. Um, this result here from QuadriMesher uh, is straight from the high poly version here. Took me around 45 seconds to one minute to process uh, compared to this result here from PolyRayTop that took me around almost 20 minutes. So it's a big step further and in production, this time really uh, counts. This time really counts, guys. So talking about symmetry, one thing that QuadriMesher have that no other uh, automatic retopo have on the market right now is the symmetry option. And here on the symmetry option, you can see that uh, it really does a good job evaluating the topology and mirroring it across. So we have a perfect result across both sides of the model, both in here and both in here. But you can see that also I use a target poly count of around uh, 6,000 uh, quads and the end mesh ended with around uh, 5,900 quads. So it's almost the same results that you specified. Here as well, I set a target poly count trying to re reduce it further to 4K and the end mesh ended with uh, 4,842 quads. So very interesting result. Now, this is not very game ready. I would suggest you to go for and uh, clean these edge loops here. We have really uh, unnecessary edge loops on these edges. I think we're evolving into an area in which we can merge the two processes and quite, sa quite save some time on the manual retopo process. And 
you can see we have also an option called adaptive size. If you guys are coming from ZBrush, you already know what this is. This is basically uh, how far the uh, creases of your model will be restrained to keep the silhouette of the model. So you can see here I use a very minimum adaptive size. I got a very even distribution of quads. And here on the other hand, I, I set it to max, which is 100. And with 100 cramped to max, we have uh, a lower polygon density on the even areas of the model and more constraints on the creases, such as the eye here or even the shin uh, in the back plate. And with Polyretopo, uh, Polyretopo currently doesn't have any option for mirroring your geometry. So I recommend you, if you want to use the Maya Building uh, feature, do that across a half cut uh, symmetry, uh, geometry and then mirror it across uh, after if you want that. Because here we got some uneven results too uh, regarding the symmetry of the model on the x, x axis. Uh, but this model here is using the Polri Topo uh, tool from Maya and uh, it took me 30 minutes, almost half an hour to process. But this was the closest result I could get to um, the quad remesh results. Uh, with a different in interesting thing here that the shin and the, the mouth got more polygon density than the helmet. And I don't know why it did, did that. But uh, if, you, if you see the original model, we have actually the inverse happening. We have a, a lower geometry on the shin and a higher geometry on the helmet. So I don't know why the results was like that, but we got some minor artifacts here, as long here as well, and some artifacts on, on the bottom shin. Here on the saber as well, you can see we have some really strange edge loops going on, but in overall on this area, it kept very well. Uh, now compared to quadrimester, we have a way even, uh, geometry right here. I didn't, and I'm curious to say, I didn't set uh, symmetry on this one. So we are even getting uh, an unsymmetry model, but I did that to compare uh, exactly how they would perform against each other. And you can see that um, Quadri Mesher did a very better job, a better job at keeping the, the saber with the, the chin here with more quad density and a better geometry in overall. So I hope these results uh, help to shine a light a little bit on comparing these different um, uh, automatic retopology algorithms. Uh, be really careful when you're using this in production and when you're using this. If you're doing a manual retopo like this complex helmet here, um, this is a geometry that is very complicated to handle. So in this case specifically, uh, I would adv advise for uh, a direct uh, manual retopology. And that's it guys. Consider subscribing if you like this content. Uh, I will be on Twitter as well, answering your questions. And send me an email if you have an add-on or if you have a tool that you want me to feature on this channel. Uh, again, good Christmas, good New Year's for everybody and a happy 2020 to everyone. See ya, till next time.